Look at Covid haircut. Covid haircut, look at that. <laughs> Early doors. We get this. George Dawes. Look at us. Look at us. There's a couple of Yorkshiremen on Cornish coast. Doing a bit. What are we calling out again? What is it? Um. My sugar daddy candy king. <laughs> no, no, no. It's called the Sidewinder Scary's Candy King. Candy King, the sugar daddy of the sea. Let's get in there. I'm going down and see if we can. Let's want to go see if we can. Mither this seal through. Yeah. I'm going to mither this seal off. And that is not a sexual term. Is it not? No, I'm not going to go mither a seal off on camera. Look at that. God, we really have been spoilt for uh, for sunrise this morning, but that was the plan. That's why we get up early or sleep in car parks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the sunrise, getting that, uh, getting code for showers and that was good as well. Yeah, brilliant. That's just one thing to think about seals. He's. Is that big? Couldn't look, that's not as big as that bull head. Oh, that's a big one. Male, it's like a... Yeah, Rottweiler head. We're in here, look, bait getting chased up into the cliff. Hey, if we could pull a fish in with this sun behind us, can you can you yeah, sort that out? Pull a fish in before this seal gets it. Oh, yeah. Right, come on, fish locker. Get your, get your money shot. Here we are. Oosh. First cast usually just to lay the line on the reel. Dawn, it's one of the most active from what I've yep. been led to believe. Visibility just, looks just good. Just had a knock there. Have you? Had a little knock. Yeah, it's that witching hour, it's the, yeah. it's the predator hour. The golden hour for us photographers, but... Oh. Reason being, is you'll see predators have always got a bigger eye. And it's that hour when the, the nighttime fish, the daytime fish, neither one of them can see very well. The predators with the bigger eye. That's where they. Yeah. It's their time to shine. Their time to shine. Predator fish and what we, what would, uh, like what's on the menu as far as predator fish in this area? Bass, bass and pollock. Bass and pollock. We'd get out else like a little rogue, some other little gar out there. There's always a chance of it. It's one of the things I love about sea fishing. There's always that wild card that could possibly be. Yes. There. I can see them. They've moved off up there behind them two rocks. It's a good thing to look for when you're coming out fishing like this. Is, um, bird activity. There they are, look, just, just frying here. Oh, yeah. Could be a little shoal of mackerel, it's just Bird activity, like seagulls or gannets or something like that, chessing fish. Or like a bait ball boiling. Yeah. Because, like we've seen here, the mackerel or the bats have chased them in against the cliff so they can't escape. And when they jump out of the water, it's because someone's gone into the ball and attacked them. What was that? I don't know about this. <laughs> I do not know about right. Could have been so dolphin, could have been we're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy, because Summit just broke the water there that was beyond. It wasn't a fish. Could have been a dolphin. Could it have been a whale? Well, could it? Could have been a. Could have been a bluefin tuna. Could have been a tuna, a whale, a womble. It could have been out. But whatever it was, it was big and intimidating. This is one of the things that I'll try and explain to folks when they say, oh yeah, I've seen a tuna, I've seen a tuna. So it's not like a dolphin. I mean, you'll see a dolphin and they're real slender, like they're graceful, aren't they? It's just yeah. Like, you see a tuna at the water, it's like... Is it? It's like a car's driven off cliff. Aggressive. Oh. Sheer power-eating water. We wouldn't get one this far in, though, would we? Would we? 
there's almost too it's, much to deal with. From last year down St. Ives Bay, like people up, 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 and we're in 10 or 12 feet of water. Size of that. Look at that. Right, look at the size of this fucking thing's head, look. Look at state of head on that. That's like Anton Deck's head, that guy with that one, Anton Deck with big head. Oh, you can't make it out on camera, but. Uh, it was billed as not being any seals yesterday, you said, didn't you? I don't know, it'd be reaped. Won't be any. I've never seen so many seals in my life. Seal sanctuary down here. Yep, yeah, Matt, you're in. John. Fish on. It's a seal. <laughs> it's a seal, we've got a seal. No, look, this seal is coming up towards you. Will you catch and cook it? If that seal sees it, it will go. Oh, oh he's gone for it, look, that is intimidating. He's just slowly going. Oh, is he off? Yeah, no. Coming along the surface, that's all. What is it? A little pollock back looking at it. How can you see that? Trained eye. Oh, here's a little pollock. Stunning golden. Oh, that's nice. Something a bit different. That is beautiful. Look at that. Natural mine on that. I love them when I've been eating kelp. When I've been living in kelp and they're all like a motley gold. Yeah, they're lovely stuff. I think of somewhere I can let him go where that seal won't have him as soon as he goes in water. Gold eye on it and that. He's just going to have to take his chance. Good luck. Look at that. First fish of the day. Can we show the with a bit of a... Oh, he's gone. There we go. Straight away. Seal. Happy birthday, seal. He knows. That big lad knows. Another little pollock, I think. Aye. Got that seal look yet. Big seal. Oh. Right, so we've be just been trawling. We've had two pollock. No showstoppers. And we've come into this little bit here with all these rock formations, you can see. There's little rocks that have come away from the main land and the sea goes behind them we can get round. John's just dropped anchor. We'll put my dive flag will go on the top of the boat so people know that there's divers below if they come anywhere near. They shouldn't do but just in case. And there's a seal there so that's good news. It's definitely going to be definitely going to be diving with a lot of seals. That's just something that I'm going to have to get used to. For anybody who wants to know phonetically, it's the Alpha flag. The Alpha flag? There's going to be enough light. There's enough light now, I guess it's as day as it's going to be. I'm stop putting it off. <laughs> Thing is, it has to be for me, it has to be good visibility if I'm swimming with seals because I need to be able to see them on approach. If it's cloudier out like that, I'm out, I'm not doing it. If there's, oh, there's a seagull on the cliff, no, I can't get <laughs> Seagull's looking don't at me start, funny, I'm don't not... Start coming up with all these not excuses. doing it, not doing it, <laughs> yeah, yeah.
Get a bit too friendly. in sorry about this wind but that's how it is out in big blue and the there's a couple of caves down here it's what is it 12 13 feet we're gonna have a little dive down here see if we can't tussle out a little armor plated sea bug for you We're just about to leave this mark now. We were diving these two caves, one of which had a female and a male in, and he was a bulldozer of a thing. Probably not good eating, but it would have been good to get him out just to, to let you ogle him. Uh, and then the other one had a lobster in, but they were just too big. We tried a few things, a few different methods, and it wasn't happening. I pulled a lobster out, got its claw, it shed its claw, and it had recently shed its skin. So it was all soft. 
and as John says they're just a bit watery and not worth keeping so he notched it V notched it and then we put it back in its hole and if you want to know what V notching is it's a conservation method and it'll be on John's channel he's got loads of things about it or watch the video that he uploads of this trip it should be on there and um, what's the plan now well we can go out and try and get you a mackerel if you want yes please we will. so we're just trawling looking for Mackie John's got his fish finder on and we're looking for just big groups of stuff that might be mackerel uh, and John's just jigging with feathers let's we'll see if we can't get one or two for pan and there you go target fish within no time oh, I don't mess about is there a legal size with Mackie? 30 centimetres. Is it? Seems a lot like a beautiful fish. Depends where you are. Well, as to how beautiful they are. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how drunk you are. Chasing the same thing that the, the mackerel are. Oh, look at that, lovely. Golden. Dude, him being about ten times bigger. Lexi Claus on that. Lexi Claus on the it. Lovely little thing, it is. Stunning, stunning blues. There she is, back in soup. Get her back in. I even hauled a couple of pots there, so whatever. We'll get rammed up here. Uh, oh, here we go, we're going to get waved by these posh. Loafers, look. Look Different kettle of fish, look. Other half. Waffies. No other half live there. Uh, but we did get a brown crab that's a keeper, so that's what and one to add to the cook up. And a velvet crab that was quite a size, so we'll take that. Ahoy! I think that's what you. That's it. Is that what you think people talk about? Ahoy, matey! Right, and then uh, it's a working boat, isn't it? Bait these back up and over the side, and then John can come check them another day. Right, we've moored the boat up and we've we've hiked a mile or so away from the boat just to do our little cook up we've got john's swedish torch on the go if you want to see how to make them you can follow his second channel link below i'm on the bush box and we're just boiling up some water we did actually in the end had quite a lucrative day we'll have a little look here she is Cracking real edible crabs. Look at that. And there's even a velvet, an angry velvet, and a couple of handfuls of fresh prawns. And John's just whittling himself a spoon because he's. Because I'm gone, with a bushcrafter. He's I felt, gone, he's gone, I felt like I had to. He's going more bushcraft than me. I'm just using an odd shell. Well, well that's that it. We're just. Just change roles then, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I'm just going to go fishing for a bit. 
Cooking these is incredibly simple. All you need to do is either clean seawater or fresh water with salt added. If you're cooking any shellfish, it should really be in water that's as salty as the water you've taken it from. Get it to a rolling boil. You can see here now it's a fierce rolling boil. We put the shellfish in. When the water comes to a full rolling boil again, two more minutes after that and it's done. What will happen is the lobster, as you put it in the pan, it will, by its temperature, drop the water off the boil. As it raises back up to the boil, it will cook. The larger lobster will take longer to come back to the boil, so this method works for all sizes. Right, while I should have been prepping these crabs, I thought I would try and... As I'm with a bushcrafting legend... <laughs> yeah, you said legend, so there you go. I thought I would try my hand at a bit of bushcrafting. It's pretty easy, this bushcrafting. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I... No, I didn't do it for him. He's, got a he's only using a Leatherman as well, so... Yeah. For anyone who knows about spoon carving, you managed yeah. to get a ball out of it. Yeah, I did. You get a bit of a closer pump ball. Stunner. Like a hand model. It's a stunner, mate. It's yeah. an absolute stunner. And I, I only got, like, four splinters in my mouth when I used it. <laughs> and I got myself a board because I was worried that I was going to stab myself with knackers. There you go. And that can stay on. This Ron, Ron here's outdoors now, so we can say things like knackers. There you go. This might... Actually, I might make a video about this on my pallet wood projects, this was a piece of pallet. That's a pallet wood project? Yeah, it was out of this piece of pallet. Look at that for it before, hold them together just before and look at that. That's what you can achieve people. Just put your heart and soul into mm. something, there you go. Work hard, study at school, you could be sat on a beach whittling spoons. <laughs> yeah, but make sure you have a board to protect your knackers. I'll show you really quickly how I prep these crabs. This guy here, easiest way to dispatch these. Is if you just get a knife or a screwdriver, peel this flat back. And you see there, you go up and in, behind there. And then if you go in here, at the same time, there. And this other one as well, they might, they might have like a little tiny bit of a flex inside the legs, but it's just nerves. Well, both That's gone. It, quick as you like. That's it, they're both out. You main dispatch. All you need to do now, now this is, this is a subject of a little bit of a controversy. I will always err on the side of caution. I don't know if any of you know, there is um, there's a toxin that's in algae, that's called domoic acid. Shellfish, crustaceans, any of the harmful chemicals that they've ingested throughout their lives, or any of the harmful bacteria from the food that they've been eating, is concentrated in their internal organs. So even though you can eat brown meat, there is a risk with it. I've always kind of thought that it's not worth the risk. Food poisoning is a terrible thing. So I'll only eat the white meat. So in all of these claws and in all of these knuckles here. The easiest way to butcher them off is if you just go into the back there like that. And then you can just peel the top off. Now all these pieces on the side of here are its gills, also known as dead man's fingers. Inside, inside there you've got the internal organs, that's the heart, all the intestines, that's all of what it's been eating. So we'll wash all of this out and take all of these off. You don't eat the gills, but inside of all of this, inside of all of here, is full of meat. So we'll pull them off, pull the flesh pellets off, and then the most simple thing to do is if you find a rock to pivot it on, there look, just crack it straight in half, take it down to the seat and wash those pieces out. It's going to be a little bit like Tetris, trying to fit all this cracking crab. And is that the same as the Exactly lobster? the same. Just bring it to the boil. Yeah. Full rolling boil. Put it all in, when it comes back to the full rolling boil, two more minutes after that, it comes off. There you go. That's them all done perfectly. They don't have to go bright red, these guys, they look. 
I think I'm part velvet crab where I've gone a bit pink. Let's see, can you see it on there? Oh, look at the state of me. I'm just slightly more used to it than you, I think. No, you're going to get one of them t-shirt tans like a, like, oh, a, like a farmer. Right, this is the lobster claw that came off the soft lobster. This shows you how soft it is, look, watch. There's just nothing, in, there's no thickness in this shell. And meat-wise inside, look. This is why there's absolutely no point in taking a soft lobster. Look what it's come out of. The lobster's, the lobster's muscle inside the shell hasn't had time to expand properly and fill out. So yeah. There you go. If you ever do find a soft lobster, you're better off just putting it back. Right, coconut oil in the pile of pan. Usually, when we're cooking up lobsters on the beach, we'll just boil them like this and then just eat them straight out of the shell. But of course it would be interesting just to put it into a pile of we have some nice prawns, and uh, what's life without a little bit of adventure? There you go. Oh, yeah, there. I've even whittled myself a spoon, especially for the occasion, so yeah. <laughs> no pressure on your pile. Of, uh, <laughs> I know, yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? Next time you see me, I want to have my old dinner set. I expect it, mate. I expect it. I expect it on other channel. Full, full pallet wood dinner set. Blatant lot. I can't go full bushcraft straight away, I'm after. No, you just work you out to it. Is that what you're doing? When are you going to go full bus stuff? Well, I'm still working on it. I'm still transforming. Still transforming from full piss head. <laughs> so these will take no time at all. You can already see they're going pink now. Ooh. And frying them enables us to eat them. You can eat the shells and that. It's a lot nicer than if you just boil them. The only thing I'd do is always boiling them. And you can pick them up by like the head, because they've got that. These are a type of prawn, it's called serratus, right, with the, with the horn. That's about ready then. In with the fresh lobster, there's three claws and a full tail in there. That's just to warm it through because that is already cooked. Prawn and lobster paella with brown crab and a little velvet crab in there for good measure. And that is just, we've earned this. We've just, we met at quarter to five this morning, pootled out, uh, were gifted a glorious sunrise. Sunrise, yay! And we worked for this, so... Uh, we're going to get some well needed calories in us. What are these prawns like we're saying? Of course, see, I've got like a hard on on them. Literally, you just go up oh, like that. Sweet, and then just. You can if you want to. You might have a oh, ball. mate, I just fucking do. I look like someone who's going to peel a prawn. You might have a ball that you'd have to go through for them. After seeing the way that you destroyed those razor clams, oh. you'd have eaten them with the shell on. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Baby lobster tail. Speaking of lobster tail. I'm enjoying this spoon. <laughs> yeah? Not a bad maiden voyage for her. I spent more time with this than I did going them lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> you did actually, didn't you? I'll have a bit of a dip of that. You had it before? It's good. Good gear. Oh, I'll out. tell you what, it's got some kick in it. Nice though. Nice. As far as going in with the claw, are you? I'm going to join you. As far as collaborations go, I think this one's worked out quite well so far. Oh, it's been a good one, hasn't it? Ooh, fucking hell. I've enjoyed myself, mate. Well, it's been effortless, really. It maybe helps because we're both from Whitby and that, so you got that same fucking... <laughs> <laughs> same daft mentality. Yeah, you're a bit daft, in, you're a bit thick in head. It's a small world. Because I, from our guys, um, one of John's videos came up after I was watching somewhere else, just in the, in the recommended thing, and I watched it. 
And he said he was in Cornwall, but the accent was just too familiar for me. Too familiar. And then the plot thickened. It's my accent, but a bit thicker, I think yours is. Of course, I'm a bit thicker. There you go. There you go. In. One of the things I don't know, you might you might already know this, but I always use like the end of one of these legs. Yeah, to get them out. As a pick out. Yeah. And it worked brilliant for legs, doesn't it? Yeah. I like, have you seen it? Gordon Ramsay, I think, does it with rolling pin where he just rolls it out. It works for lobster legs, doesn't it? Mm. I, ah. Same type of thing happened with me with his videos. I'd, uh, I'd watched one or two of them. And I thought, oh, well, you, most of your filming seems to be done from up there. I didn't really know how closely we were. Until um, one of my friends that I used to work with, who I haven't spoken to, told you already, didn't I? Yeah. One of my friends that I hadn't worked with for, God, it'd be over 12, maybe 14 years, found me on Instagram, sent me a message, just saying, oh, I was watching one of his outdoors videos and one of yours popped up afterwards. And I was like, I know them ears. <laughs> and, I was like, yeah, that's me. Ah, that's funny, that? and also, John's mum used to teach me geography at secondary school, which is mad. That's a small world. It's even madder because my mum's not a teacher. <laughs> You're madder because he doesn't have a mum, so there you go. Oh, I've got a thick shell on him, that crab. Good eating. Yeah, good eating. So you can tell they're going to be full of meat when they've got a real hard shell. Mm. You'll have seen on some of the other videos that we've done together when we've talked about when you get a crab out of the pots or something and it's really clean. That's when we're talking about it. Like with a lobster where it was soft. You can tell how recently they've peeled their shell by how clean and how opaque they are. The shells on these are really thick. It's a really full colour. Covered in them casts as well. Yeah, covered in so. them kill worms. Mm, kill worms, that's it. Oh, look at that in one. Boom. Ah, oh, nutty. Some people have commented on videos before in the past. And they've asked me, they just said, well, how much would that cost you to, to buy in a restaurant? So, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no, but, yeah. Considering that I don't think we eat in the type of restaurants where they serve this. No. Um, but no. fresh lobster, fresh crab, fresh prawns, all dressed like this. In a seafood yeah. platter. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking at? 40, 50 quid? A head, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even know. Mind you. Also, for folks who don't already know, when you're, when you're dealing with a claw on lobsters and crabs, the movable one has always got like a cartilage disc on the inside. So if you're going to bite straight into it, you need to be careful. Because, as I'll show you in a second, turn a bit of shot. There, look. On the inside, there is a cartilage disc. There it is, be aware. So don't go steaming in there trying to bite through ah, that's it. That's what I do. Steamboat it. Think about it after. I mean, it would have cost a lot of money for this, but we have paid in <laughs> manual labour, yeah. We grafted for it. Spoiled for choice, I don't know what to go for. You're even just pulling your uh, pulling your nets up, I mean your Couples. pots up is a, is an absolute chore. Mm. I'd have got it today. That's why it looks like Popeye from elbow down. <laughs> it's a hard graft. I always find it really exciting though. You're never knowing what's gonna yeah, be it in them. It, yeah. Could be anything, it could be an octopus, could be a conger ale, could be could be nout. Yeah. Now Where do you go from here? <laughs> what do you do to top this? Well, that's it, innit? This is, a, this is us eating out our final meal. Till I come back down again to move here. <laughs> Till you come down in two weeks and you're like, oh, it's cold up now. I've missed it. People who are going to be doing this coastal foraging, like we have been doing, there are certain guidelines that you could follow. And your safety guidelines are just almost like common sense rules. The first one is, don't collect anything from around commercial harbours, marinas or working boats. And when I say working boats, that can be anything from like a diesel barge all the way to a crab potting boat, to a trawler, to anything like that. The main reason being is, 
areas of commerce, like commercial harbours and marinas, they have anti-foul underneath the boats, which has a biocide in it. Not only that, but there's diesel, there's oil, there's, there's waste toilets, that type of thing. And also working boats, like crab potting boats, trawlers, netters. They have a lot of detritus, they have a lot of like dead marine material that goes over the side. That, when it rots, creates harmful bacteria. That, in the water, the shellfish, the crustaceans, everything like that, feeds on it and it goes inside them. So, no marinas, harbours or commercial areas. Avoid any outfall pipes, sewage pipes, drainage pipes. I think that's self-explanatory. Yeah. Also, one that possibly people don't, don't possibly consider is no estuaries, river mouths or in like rivers, that type of thing, after heavy rain. The reason for that being is because of um, a process called leaching. And it's that farmers put pesticides, biocides, manure, all that type of stuff on the farmers' fields to help the crops grow. Now they spray it, they spread it, they sow it in any way they can onto the fields. When it rains, some of it washes off the surface, washes down the little tributaries and ends up in the rivers, which ends up in the river mouths, which ends up in the estuaries. All that type of stuff is filtered in by the crabs, the shellfish. So don't collect in river mouths or estuaries just after heavy rain. The other one is, and this is a bit of an old wives tale, and it's don't collect filter feeders in months without an hour. But an old wives tale and it's true though, isn't it? Well, there's, there's usually a reason behind them. Right. Months without an hour, ah, so May, June, July, August, is because those are the times of year when you get the most plankton in the water. I mean, down here we suffer with something called May bloom which is in May and all it is is it's an algal bloom it's a time of year when the waters are warming up and you get an awful lot of algae in the water there are toxic algae now filter feeders being clams, razor clams scallops, that type of thing cockles, mussels they all filter the water so they filter in all the, um, all the plankton, all the bacteria and they can have it inside them so if you're going to collect anything We've collected some, but that's because I know the local area is very clean. If you're in an area where you're at least even the slightest bit concerned, speak to your local IFCA or your local DEFRA. They'll be able to tell you the water quality. Also, the biggest killer that'll get you out there is the actual sea itself. If you're going foraging, just <laughs> check your tides and be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, Paul, be sure, be sure you don't get blocked by tide. Because mm. uh, you might have to end up j- jumping in. And, uh, <laughs> or having to climb up the cliff. Wading back, yeah. That's a lesson learned. Hopefully I'll cut a little segment of that in there. Uh, of me getting soaking wet. Give me my pan. Pan man. Pan man. Just be quick with this one. Look at state. Red face. Air like a dirt, like some sort of mad Look ex-footballer. Like that velvet crab. Look at that velvet crab if he was an ex-footballer that's fallen on hard times because that is a barnet and a half. <sighs> right, we're wrapping this one up. You already know what we did today because you've seen it, because you've watched it. This has been an amazing collaboration with my boy, my fellow Whitbyite, John. You probably follow him already, but if you're one of my subscribers and you don't follow him, please go down below, click the link, and check out his back catalogue on both his channels because they are amazing, absolutely amazing. And as far as collabs go, even without all the filming aside, this has been amazing. It's been an amazing trip. It's I've enjoyed the, it. It's the first one that I've done. If, if, this is, if this is how they go, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring them on. Yeah. Right, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Love you. Bye. And then we walk off and I try and hold your hands. And you deny it. There's a theme. There's a theme, guys. <laughs> this one's for you. Love you. Bye. I'm like Jordan, tryna rise on to the top Me, I'm tryna be an icon from the jump They were war then, I let bygones be bygones Cause they bars all have gone by by the month Me, I'm tryna be an icon from the jump They were war then, I let bygones be bygones Cause they bars all have gone by by the month